this series of videos will be about the Riemann Stiltz integral. I'm going to call it Riemann integral from now on. This name is a bit hard for me to to, to pronounce. I think it's, it must be something like stilt. Um, do not count on these videos or on any calculations on integrals or do not count on any calculus at all. This will be totally theoretical and the, the main theme will be, and the only theme will be, the integral. So I'm going to begin with some notation. And do not count also only on definitions. Uh, we are going to get uh, a lot of definitions and a lot of proofs too. So to begin with, um, we are going to make certain stipulations concerning uh, notation and some terminology that we're going to use. Okay. So first, we're going to our main object will be the, um, the intervals. So here we are going to use a lot this interval, an interval A B, a closed and bounded interval. A, B. Um, and I'm going to name the functions f, g, alpha, beta, etc. Do not count uh, on me to call the function f of x. Okay, usually in pure mathematics we just say function f, func function g, f of x. Um, the name of the function is f. Um, of course, we are going to assume real valued functions defined on this bounded interval AB. Um, I might get into complex valued functions, but that will be for another set of, of videos and, and, and for another time. Okay, so if we have uh, an interval, this interval AB, um, Considering closed and bounded, so it will, okay, the interval will be closed. So I'm counting A and counting B. Um, we can take a partition of this interval. And usually, of course, the partition is called P. P stands for partition, obviously. And the partition is a, a set of points. I can call this point x0, this one, x1, this two, x2, etc. So the partition will be a set of points like x0, x1, etc. till xn. Okay? This, this interval divided into in this point will be a partition. But of course, these points, uh, they, they have to be ordered uh, somehow. So A will be equal to x not smaller than x1, etc. till x n minus 1, x n, and x n will be B. So x not will be A, and x n will be B. So this is a partition of this particular interval, okay? Um, and I could take, if I have an interval here from A to B, and imagine I make a partition here only with one point, okay? With the same interval, a to B, I can take another partition, for instance, this one, okay, here, I made a partition of only one point, so I'll have, I will join this interval with this interval, okay, and that will be AB. Here, I can partition the same interval into three one, two, three, four intervals. Okay, 
and the sum of these four intervals will be AB2. Um, so I'm going to call this partition P and I'm going to call this partition P prime. Okay. Or so I'm going to call this one, yes, this one P and this one P prime. It's not hard to see that um, so P will be a subset of P prime. If you take these two points, you have P here. So P, this partition, is a subset of P prime. Okay, so we can write um, P prime. P is a subset. P is a subset of P prime. In this case, um, P prime having more intervals, being more partitioned. Uh, P prime is said to be finer. P prime, I'm going to write it down. P prime um, is uh, said to be um, finer than P. So P prime. P prime is finer than P. In topology, there are some some difference in ter terminology. Sometimes uh, there are difference between analysts and, and topologists calling finer to one interval or one set. But here we are not going to deal with that now. Um, so here we are going to use this terminology. Okay. So P prime is going to is said to be finer than P. P prime is uh, finer than P. Or we also say um, P prime is a, ref, uh, a ref, uh, refinement of P. So P will be a subset of P prime. Uh, now, every single point here, there is a difference between these this points, between this one and this one, this one and this one. I'm going to change. But to get a bit more clear. So if I have an interval, um, I make a partition, so there will be a, a difference between these points. Okay? And so we are going to call this difference delta, the, the difference alpha k. So alpha xk minus alpha x k minus 1 that will be the um, the variation okay so if this is for instance if this is um, this point here is um, x k this point here will be x k minus 1 and this difference here will be the variation, delta. So delta will be a, the difference, it will be a length. Okay? So our interval, our interval is going to be the sum from k1 to n, delta. So the variation of all the points. Okay, and that will be this being B, this point being B, this point being A, the sum of all the variations will be alpha B minus alpha A. Um, okay, so this will be the, the partition. So the, the set of four possible partitions now. This is a possible partition. For any interval, if I have this interval, I, I can make a partition like this, and I can make a partition like this. Okay. So I have many ways of doing uh, this partition. Okay. Now, 
um, and and I'm saying this, this would be partition P, partition P prime, partition P prime prime. Okay, but uh, the set of all partitions of the interval AB, I'm going to write it like this with this funny P. Okay, P of AB. This is the set of four partitions of this interval, this interval AB. The norm of the part partition is the length. Um, of the large, largest subinterval. For instance, here, the largest subinterval might might be this one. For instance, this is the largest one. So, the norm of p in in this case will be this length. For instance, in p prime it will be this length. In p prime prime it will be one of these. You see. For instance, imagine we have an interval like this, and we have a point like this, and another one. So, let us call it this P prime prime prime. So, the norm of P prime 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 will be this here, this length here. So, the norm um, of a partition P is the length of the largest subinterval of P. And we are going to write it this way, okay? Norm of P. Now, it's more or less obvious that then P prime, if P prime is a subset of P, this implies that the norm of P will be smaller or equal. Uh, of p prime will be smaller or equal to the norm of p. I'll get back to this. And we uh, so we say um, a refinement a refinement of the a refinement of the partition a refinement of the partition decreases its norm. But the converse does not necessarily hold. We will be back to this. Uh, in another video.